Hey guys, Keith Brown, Tack Room Devotional. This week we, were ta- we are talking about salvation, and um, we found out that there's seven facts. There's probably more than this, but we've wrapped it up in seven. First of all, fact number one is that God loves us. Amen and amen. But we also found out that we're sinners. Wow, God loves us and we're sinners? Well, it says in the Bible that he loved us even yet while we were still sinners. And then number three, we found out that we're dead in sin. In other words, because of our sin, our sin nature, and because um, uh, uh, the wages of sin is death, we found out that, that we're dead in sin. And then we found out that Christ died for us. Woo, glory to God. He came and shed his blood, and did the things that were necessary in order to fulfill the judgment that was against sin. Praise God. Now you want to know why you need a Lord and Savior? It's him. He's the one that, he's the only way to the Father. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. That's John chapter 14, verse 6. Amen. And then we also found out um, um, yesterday, I... I gave you opportunity to give your life to Christ. It was a simple prayer. It's, it's confessing with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believing in your heart that God raised him from the dead. The confession, of course, is so important, but the believing in your heart that, that he's alive, if you believe that, then it changes your life forevermore. Especially when you find out that he actually takes up residency within us. Woo, glory to God. So today, um, I want to talk to you about the last two facts. The next fact that we want to look at is the fact that you can be saved and know it. See, yesterday, like I, we ended, I, I told you that maybe just because you prayed that prayer and received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, do you feel different? No, probably not. You feel like the same person you did. So how do I know for a fact, know for sure, that my eternal destiny is, is secure in Christ? Well, look at 1 John chapter 5, verse 10 through 13, and I'm just going to read uh, verse 13. It says that you may know that you have eternal life. Upon the authority of God's word, you can be saved and know it. Because the word of God is the word of truth. So if it's truth, it doesn't lie. And it tells us that we can know that we are saved. Your faith in God's infallible word is your assurance of salvation. John chapter 3 verse 36 says, He who believes in the Son has everlasting life. Now the word has there is the present tense. It doesn't mean someday you're going to have everlasting life. If you gave your life to Christ yesterday and prayed that prayer with, with me, you now have started your eternity. It, it began the day you received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. The Bible is a book of certainties. It strengthens, convic- uh, it strengthens convictions and establishes beliefs. God wants you to know a few things. Number one, he wants you to know that you are now a child of God. That's 1 John chapter 3, verse 2. He wants you to know that you've been made the righteous of God in Christ Jesus. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, and Romans chapter 10, verse 1 and 4. He wants you to know that you are now a, tr- a new creation in Christ Jesus. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. He wants you to know that you are now a son and an heir of God. God, joint heirs with Jesus Christ. That's Galatians chapter 4 verse 7. Um, Could you uh, have greater assurance than is found in God's word? Um, Matthew chapter 24 verse 35 says, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. So in other words, if it says it in the word, then it's true. So the final fact that we need to look at, again, we're looking at the seven facts of salvation. This final fact is that you are now a child of God and you should obey him. Okay? Um, Because there are certain things now that you've given your life to Christ that you should follow up and do. Um, Acts chapter 5 verse 29 says we ought to obey God rather than man. You now belong to Jesus Christ. He is your Lord, your master, and uh, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 6 verse 24, you, can no, you cannot serve two masters. So he's either your Lord and Savior or the world is. Amen. Determine today 
He is my Lord. He is my Savior. And I'm going to live my life to glorify and exalt his name. Here's a few things that you might want to consider. First of all, uh, start going to church. Go to a good Bible-based church. You might want to also follow him in baptism. Now, if you don't understand baptism, we've talked about it here before on Tack Room Devotional. We'll talk about it again. Um, uh, it is a, a witness of your faith in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 6, verse 4. Um, maybe you want to join a Sunday school class. Uh, uh, definitely attend the worship services. We need to learn to be worshipers. The Bible says that God is seeking those, the true worshipers, who will worship him in spirit and in truth. It's one thing for you to seek God, but it's another thing when you got God seeking you. Amen. Um, be a faithful steward. This is talking about giving. Well, right away you're thinking, oh yeah, you're trying to get my money. No, forget your money. Why don't you give of your time and your talents and, and your giftings and your callings. Um, uh, get actively involved in the church and begin to serve. There's other ways of giving besides just money, but money's part of it. So start studying, start understanding all this. Make time, of course, to pray and to read your Bible. Okay, listen, I hope all that makes sense. And if you, uh, again, if you have not made Jesus the Lord of your life, go back and watch yesterday's uh, broadcast and, um, and listen to it very carefully. And I hope you too will um, become a, a child of God and part of the family of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, we love you. Jesus loves you. We pray that God would richly bless you as you diligently seek him and serve him. And remember, today's Saturday, so tomorrow, go to church.